Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Biblical Brawlers Podcast, where we teach the truth and unteach the garbage. Well, I'm John Whitaker. And I'm Derek Drury. And we are the pastors of New Day Christian Fellowship. And that's a church right in the heart of the inner city of Springfield, Ohio. Now, the Biblical Brawlers Podcast is a tool that we've put together to help the church to learn what God is really saying in His Word. We aim to bring out the true context of the Bible as a whole in order to aid in dissolving of the great confusion that is going on today in the midst of the body of Christ. We're not here to fight against people per se, but we are here to fight for the truth and rightly divide the Word of God as it says we must do in 2 Timothy 2.15. And with that said, we are going to get out our doctrinal parkas and warm up a bit with some good old theological hot tea because it's about to get a little bit... Nippy in here for today's topic, John. You're not allowed to say nippy. <laughs> we, we, need, we need to blur that out. It's been well, a while. It has been. It's been. A, yes. It's always been a little bit of a while, hasn't it? <laughs> right. You know? oh, man. Yeah, we're back by popular demand. We are um, consistently inconsistent with um, our our release schedule, but right. uh, we're, we're back at it and excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, man. Schedule and life, it, it really does hit... Uh, it really does hit quite frequently, uh, medical issues and, you know, all kinds of, uh, things, right. Work and everything. So we're doing the best we can people. Um, but we appreciate you. Uh, we love you very much, but we will give you a warning that today's topic, uh, is going to be a little sensitive, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit Mm -hmm. sensitive. So listen at your own risk. So, uh, I'm going to start by saying who knew, um, I am 46 years old, and I learned something this month in lieu of the abominable uh, title given to June as Pride Month. I have now learned that throughout history, uh, there has been a massive uh, imprisonment of women's nipples. Um, (laughs) Did you know that, John? Uh, th- that is actually news to me, uh, but I, I, I guess I should say thank you for bringing that to my attention. I, I, I didn't know, you're, but uh, you're welcome. <laughs> you, you are always educating. Everybody me, is <laughs> welcome. Uh, yeah, that's what I learned this month. So, um, you know, the apparently the patriarchy has uh, always held women's nipples prisoner behind their clothing, and. Honestly, I feel weird even saying that word as much as I am right now, but that's where we're at. I feel like I'm starting to sweat. (laughs) I've been sweating already. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? That's where we're at right now, right? That's where we're at. And so it's like, let's just get it out there and talk about how this is how the world is. is, uh, This is what they're complaining about and saying, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and so let's just be adults here, sort of. And, uh, and speak see, for yourself. See the best way that we can talk about this, you know. And 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 so with this comes this this imprisonment comes finally. Um, we have a team of the bravest uh, individuals on earth that have taken the burden upon themselves to finally free the nipple. That is the movement that we are now hearing about, right? So it it is called free the nipple movement. So when it comes to bravery now, forget about your first responders, forget about the police, forget about your firefighters, EMTs, Forget about all the military men and women who fight every day in this country. Uh, forget about all the Christian missionaries. That is the good, the good Christian missionaries. That is the that trek across the world into the most dangerous places to spread the gospel. If you want to see real bravery, it was on full unbridled display at the White House a couple weekends ago. It was actually was Saturday, uh, June eleventh, twenty twenty three. And on that day, at least 1,500 people and allies of the so-called alphabet community attended a complete and utter satanic display of pagan people worship. Yeah, I, you would you would think like we're we're being extreme here or we're you know exaggerating, but this this is actual events that are happening hap- happening in the, the the capital of the the most powerful country yeah. in the world. Yeah, right, right on the lawn. Of the White House, right. And right in front of our, our our president, and we'll we'll talk about here how he's you know not just condoning it and in, in, encouraging it. Oh yeah, encouraging, embracing, mm-hmm. celebrating it, you know, and and so they put out a one of those so called as they all continually say wholesome family events where men dress up in clown suits and drag themselves around and call themselves queens. 
-hmm. you know, that this is what we're celebrating, you know, now in this particular day is also the very same wonderful party that trans model Rose Montoya, a man that wants us all to believe that he is a woman, took off his top and with his hands jiggled his surgically installed breasts for the cameras. And here's what what he, he said. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the free the nipple movement now. I, I support this movement. I love the movement. Um, now, this is a growing movement, again, that, that, that uh, has started among celebrities in Hollywood. But he says, of course, I've never felt so free. And so then what he does is he goes on to give another one of the, and, and you've seen these, these, it's always the, oh, you know, I, I didn't mean to mm -hmm. excuses uh, for his behavior. So here's what he says in an online video. He doesn't apologize. He said, I had zero intention of being vulgar or being profane in any way. I was, I was simply living in joy, living my truth and existing in my body. So, so it, it, it it's just absurd, mm -hmm. the absurdity of this. And this right here is exactly why those of us speaking out against this entire movement do so. This is why we do that, because it always leads to these barbaric, sickening, vulgar uh, behavior. And then they defend themselves by saying, oh, it's not profane. I'm living my truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what, what we're talking about, too, is, is, is how much they're also bringing this to the family to children like they are i mean it it is clear that they are targeting oh yeah children mm -hmm. um every pride parade every like every free the nipple event there there are children there watching the those displays yep i mean absolutely. and 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 young children young young enough that they don't they don't know right from wrong. Like right. they, this is, it, and we're saying, well, speak your truth. No, like you are giving them this, this false, the, yeah. these, these lies. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, it is the indoctrination of their, now they even say it straight up, you know, like, um, where, at what point were they saying in the, in the chance uh, this month now it, we're, we're here, we're queer, we're coming for your children. Mm -hmm. They're chanting that now where it used to be something like we're here, we're queer. There's nothing you can do about it. You yeah. know, and, and now it's literally they're saying we're coming for your children. Now that again, that's not every single person in the LGBTQ movement. Right. Um, but uh, well, it's the, it's it's the prominent ones and the ones yes. that are on full display. Absolutely. You it's know? the movement. Yep. It's the movement, you know, and and uh, and then uh, when. And now you have the president and Nancy Pelosi and, and, and Kamala all talking about how our children were not, they're not your children. They're our children, right? They're, they're our children. Like they're just, they're so brazen now. They don't even try to hide things that it used to be kind of like leaf slided underneath, yeah. you know, to where you got to really read between the lines. Now they're just telling, telling yeah. it like it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I saw videos this week of pride parades where, Nudist colonies are are marching in there where there's old men marching completely naked yep. right in front of toddlers. Yep. Like, I mean, within, I mean, literal feet of y them. Yes. You know, and, and somehow this, we're, we're supposed to, you know, celebrate this mm -hmm. community. Yeah. And parents are laughing about it with their little kids. There. Yes. Parents are laughing and and even uh, giving them dollar bills to, ha to hold out for drag queens, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like you got the situation where even the Boy Scouts of America... You know, it used to used to mean something. Boy Scouts of America, they're marching in parades literally alongside with um, uh, fully nude men, mm -hmm. fully nude men with these boys that are our kid. They're little kids. Mm -hmm. And and then the scout leaders are carrying the, the, the pride flags. These kids are carrying the pride flags and fully nude men. And this is OK by our country standards. Now, I guarantee you, if we had a Christian rally and somebody got up there naked, we're the first to be arrested. Right. Now, I'm not going to test that one. No. You know, but but it would happen. It would absolutely be. You know, a I, yeah. we don't even have to be naked to get arrested at a Christian rally. Right. Exactly. Rally, Fully you know? clothed. We, yeah. We, yeah. That's it's yeah. it's it'd be a hate parade, right? Just be you're right because right. we're. Speaking, speaking the truth, and yeah. you know, um, in in our pride in the Bible, like that, that's not okay. Nope, that's right, that's right. Um, what was interesting about the the um, 
celebration at the White House was that just a little bit of time before, moments before at the White House, when Joe, Joe Biden goes to the microphone and proceeds to call these people, including, you know, Rose Montoya and everything, who's personally invited the bravest, most inspiring people he has ever known. And so then that goes back to what I was just saying. Forget all about the actual brave people mm -hmm. in this country. You know, realize that this is the leader of the free world saying this. It, it, this is not some lost local governing peon. This is the president of the United States of America. And then he goes on to say, you set an example for the nation and for the world. And to that, we would both give a hearty amen. I, we agree. They do set. You do set an example. And it is an example of what happens to a nation that turns its back on Christ and gives itself over to Satan. That is the example that you set. That right there. Yep. I mean, even Jill, and, and Jill Biden even called the crowd, like, in, in the, called the crowd American I icons, right? Uh, They're American icons. icons. Of, like, yeah. I mean, those, uh, I mean, that's, that's a term that it's just, it's just unfathomable. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess it shouldn't be unfathomable anymore. Like we, right. it's, it's a reality we, we live in, but it's, it's still crazy to think that yeah. that's the, um, the times in the world that we live in. Absolutely. American icons. And then she goes on and, and she called those of us. So they're the American icons. Yet those of us who come against this movement, she says, those who want to drag our country backwards. And I thought that was an interesting term that she used because it isn't exactly, it's not us doing the dragging at all. They're the, I don't know if she did that on purpose because she didn't laugh and it didn't really get a laugh, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think, but it was an interesting, um, choice of of word right there but we are the ones trying to drag our country backwards um, mm -hmm. you know. yeah i mean even like during the you know during the speech like right next to the bidens there's i mean a young lesbian couple standing on stage next to them with their two children yep. a teenager and a one-year-old so like we said they are coming for our children mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, yeah, the guy's just sitting there holding his little one. And they're so happy about it. Or actually, it was a, it was a lesbian couple. She was holding their one-year-old and the other little teenage standing there next to you. And then they hang the pride flag, of course, right in front and center stage, in between on the, the what the, um, oh, goodness gracious, the front porch of the, mm -hmm. of the, yeah. the White House. The front and center stage is the, the pride flag uh, framed by two American flags. And... This is technically not even legal to do. At least it used to not be. It, but June 10th, I don't think it was legal to do. But then June 11th, <laughs> it was because who cares about laws anymore? Um, and we we certainly know that the insane people that are running or better yet ruining this country do not care about laws or anything. Yeah. Certainly not the law of God. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, it's it's sad because too many people are far too blind um, to to see how far we have fallen. Yep, yep, and they, I mean, we we can talk about it here, but it, in, unless you're looking for it, unless like you're, if I shouldn't say that, you don't have to look for it. You you have to. Um, willfully look away if yes. you're not noticing. You have to avert yeah. your eyes. Yes, yes. You have to avert your eyes because it's happening. And we're just, we're burying our head in the sand yeah. because we don't want to have those tough conversations. We don't want to have this conversation and then people, you know, call us hateful, call us, you know, unloving. Um, and and we just don't, we we don't want to carry that badge. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like we're in a cesspool now. And I know, again, it sounds so dramatic, but to God, look at it from a biblical standpoint. Look at it from God's eyes. We're in a cesspool down here, and we're standing on rocks, try, those of us trying to, to, to cry out against this. It's like we're standing on rocks and little islands, you know, but other people are standing on rocks and going, I'm not standing on a rock. You're standing on a rock. You're standing on a rock. It's not me standing on a rock. I don't see... I, I, no, there's not a problem. I don't see a problem. And those of us around are going... You don't see the problem. You don't see that your feet are standing right there on a rock. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're being, the blob is coming closer and closer and closer. You know, so we'll continue to fall even further. At this point, we can see in our own generation, we can see in the, in the, the lives that we have lived so far, 
how far we've come, but then how it's even ramped up in speed in yes. direction, mm -hmm. you know, misdirection just in the last, I mean, five years, yep. 10 years. Yeah. You know, so we're we're at the point where we are rolling down, rolling down to that towards that lake of burning sulfur and fire. Not us Christians, mm -hmm. you know, but everybody else. And so, you know, it's getting hot in here and now everybody's wanting to take off all their clothes and they're calling this behavior good. Yep. 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 Yeah. Um, it, sometimes it, it, it feels like you're in the twilight zone. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I mean, it. Even I mean, there's there's so-called Christians joining in this 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 pride this, this these pride parades. There's yep. um, oh yeah, wanting to know, show love. Yes, that's that's what it is. It's all in the name of love. Um, we're 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 going to play something here in a minute. Uh, the Sparkle Creed, and mm -hmm. and I think she said it's all about love, love, love. Yeah, love is love, and is love. Love is love is love, and she's not wrong. But her def their definition of love is way wrong <laughs> yeah, right? right you yeah. know um and well, true true love is is speaking out against it yeah you know um you know if we could just keep keep quiet and, and be okay with with these pride parades people you know uh, that are following it you know just walking straight into the pits of hell yeah you know um but i i, I know the people that are in those Parades like they think we're we're targeting them be, because we we hate them and we want to stone them and we you know we right. want to do all these things but that that's not like we yeah. we have a biblical love for them yes and because of that love we have a responsibility to, to speak out against yep. them for them mm -hmm. and then also for the, the the people that are influenced by them yeah to protect mm -hmm. you know it's like we're Christians, I know it's the, the, the police use this as their uh, slogan, serve and protect. That's really what we are to do as Christians, mm -hmm. to serve and love and protect. You know, and especially, man, especially now that you've got the children involved, that just makes everything go through the roof at that point. Now you're like, okay, no more. No more Mr. Nice Guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't as Christians be the nice guys that sit back and go, well, I disagree with that. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, who am I to stir the pot? Who are you? You're a Christian. Mm -hmm. You are a child of God now as a believer in Christ Jesus. You know, yeah. so, so we know what good is. We know what evil is. And we know what light is and dark is. And so we are to call, expose the dark with the light, you know, and Isaiah 520 says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Everything is on its head now. Mm -hmm. And we have a culture that celebrates evil and literally wants to do completely away with anything good. It not it amazing how God's word is so perfect that it speaks perfectly to exactly what is going on. Yeah, it's like he knew what was going on <laughs> exactly. in the future. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, that, that, that's it, it's exactly right. And then we 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 still people still look at the, this word and think, oh, it's old and outdated, and we can't. No, it it literally talks about what is what is happening <laughs> right in this moment, right in this time. Speaks yep. exactly to what yep. what we're seeing. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and, and then we'll still get, it, it, it all comes down to people suppressing the truth. You know, they, they, they suppress the truth that is written on their hearts even. Um, and so you get this point now where, it, you know, you, you're full of, you're celebrating everything. And, and honestly, they so aptly name this whole movement and they don't understand how appropriate the name of it is when they... Pride Month, right? I mean, it's hello and happy Pride. Is Joe Joe Biden's out there? Happy Pride Month, Happy Pride Year, Happy Pride Life. And so, what does Pride go before? Uh, the fall. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, the Pride Pride goes before the fall because it is the base of every sin. You can mm -hmm. think of any sin, and you cannot argue or you can try and argue you can try and you know uh, dispose of what i'm saying here but you really can't truthfully get around the fact that pride is at the base of every single sin that man commits mm -hmm. every single one so it should be no surprise that this entire movement is called pride yeah mm -hmm. hey you know and they did that to themselves <laughs> they, we, you, we, yeah, we, didn't we did not have to do that <laughs> yeah. for you you did that yeah yes. you brought this upon yourself 
Yeah, and it's still, I know we've, we've touched on it already, but it's astonishing when you understand that people, they continue to involve themselves um, and, and children in these lewd acts um, right before our eyes in this this so far, you know, just because they say it's to free them. And, and yet they're, in fact, the most bound and shackled people. They absolutely are. Mm-hmm. They are the ones that are bound and shackled, yet they say we are. And they say that they are so free, but they're not. They and. I I honestly believe that at least the vast majority of them, when they're by themselves, in a dark room, wherever they're at, and they're to their thoughts, they realize how bound they are. They're not free, and they're they they certainly are not brave. What they are is lost. They are completely lost. They are the ones in prison. They just don't know it because again they've suppressed the truth yeah that, that that's so true because they are they are not brave i mean mm-hmm. and that's i mean that's honestly why they do these pride events these these large like a big mass of people that's that's not bravery mm-hmm. that like bravery is standing up against the the masses is, is speaking right. up for the truth when everyone else is saying you're wrong mm-hmm. that that is that is courage yeah it doesn't take courage to go with the crowd no. like it's called a mob mentality for a reason it like it does not take yep. courage to do that no. like it does not cur- take courage to stand in the middle with your pick pitchfork Mm -hmm. you know, uh, that doesn't take courage. No, no. I will give an example here. You know that I'm afraid of sharks. I, I, I don't even know why God created sharks. You know, it's like, like, why, why do you make those things? You know, um, they ruin the ocean. Did did you see the video, the the recent video of the the guy that stuck his hand, um, in the boss's pinky? Yeah. That there was that one too. Then another one (laughs) there. He reached down to wa- wash his hand off, and this shark grabbed his arm and like he, he was, you got to check it out. Oh, see that <laughs> like, pass out, right? Pass out. Uh, I can't even. They they just yes. pollute the ocean with death <laughs> and teeth, and it's just they're horrible creatures, right? And so, um, but I don't. Whenever we go to the beach, it's the one place on earth that I want a crowd. Everywhere else, I'm like, I don't really like crowds so much. And I know I'm a pastor and all that, but sometimes I'm like, I don't want to be in the midst of the the crowd. But on the beach, I'm like, man, put everybody out there. (laughs) Put everybody out there because I'm, you know, me and me and my little family, let us just be in the midst of the mob there, you know, because that's that's not courageous. Let the other people get uh, bit by the Yeah, right, right. But that's not courage, you know. It's like that's me going, yeah, yeah, I'll go out there if y'all go out mm-hmm. there. You know, now I'm yep. not gonna go out into a pride parade because that. But sharks right. is a different story. It's yep. not sinful to get bit by a shark, but it does hurt a lot. I hear. <laughs> yeah. you know. But anyways, I like to bring really important and deep um, yeah. things to the conversation when I'm able to. John, yes, we'll you know, so. we'll unpack your your fear of sharks another time. There's some uh, deep seated stuff <laughs> there. That right. I, need to- <laughs> I have nightmares about right. those things. Uh, well, speaking of this, you, you know, you mentioned earlier the Sparkle Creed, John. Do you want to you want to play that uh, for the? Well, I have it memorized. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, good. Well, yeah, that's right. It's something I yeah. say a lot. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. And so the, this this Sparkle Creed is something that has came up recently and. Um, and, and you think we're, uh, being dramatic, um, when we're, we, we talk about how this isn't just in our communities, it's just not, um, on the white house lawn. This is, you know, um, in, in, in invading our churches. And this is exactly what, what we see. Yeah. Um, and this is coming from a church here. This, I, this a is so-called a quote so-called unquote correct. church. So give me just a second. I didn't. <clears throat> and let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. I believe in the non binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the rainbow spirit who shatters our image of one white light and refracts it into a rainbow of gorgeous diversity. I believe in the church of everyday saints as numerous, creative, and resilient as patches on the eighth quilt, whose feet are grounded in mud and whose eyes gaze at the stars in wonder. I believe in the calling to each of us that love is love is love, 
So beloved, let us love. I believe, glorious God, help my unbelief. Amen. I invite you to rise in body. Um, Speechless, know? right? Yeah. yeah. What You know, it's like, I even knew we were going to play that. Mm-hmm. But still, it's like, what do you say to that? That is like some children, and I hate to insult children, um, but some children got in a, a backyard somewhere and were like, how can we just right. undo all of this and come up with fun, funny words to, you know, uh, it, it sounds like some that, that belongs in the trolls movie or something. You, yeah. You know what it's like yeah. lady sparkle or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that it's just like they were just doing all that they could to make like he, who wore a fabulous tunic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, mean, two dads, two yeah. dads, you know, it, it's just unbelievable. That- yeah, and, and like you, 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 like you just said, like we knew we were playing that. Uh, I, I sent it to you earlier today. You saw it a few days ago. Mm-hmm. Like we've heard it in like what maybe even sicker list, like listening to it in that moment was. It wasn't just the the leader of the church saying it. It was, it was the unison it's of everybody. the body, and then you heard the children, yeah. like you 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 heard little Cry. they crying, yeah. like, and and to, to to say where like the, our our children uh, that that they're not in danger, that that they're not coming after our children. Case in point, Absolutely. right there. You, I mean, you literally hear kids crying in the in the background. They should be crying. Yeah, you know, I mean. It's just, it is heartbreaking to the nth degree that this is, these are grown adults that have complete lack of one common sense, complete lack. I mean, even common sense, you don't have to be a Christian to have common sense. Mm -hmm. It's common, you know, but it's not common anymore. And so to, to go just completely against everything that is God, it hurts to hear the words put into a creed like that, that are so blasphemous. Mm -hmm. It is such blasphemy and how these people, if they do not repent, repent in this life before they die, what they will find out in that moment when they are before the Lord and how foolish and horrific they will feel, how foolish they will feel and how horrific that horrific that moment will be for them. And they will be, they will be people cast into hell. This isn't a word that we made up. This isn't mm-hmm. something that uh, an idea that we made up. Hell is an idea that, that we hate. We don't like the idea yep. of hell, but it is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Everybody wants to believe in heaven, but nobody wants to believe in hell. Yep. You know, And that's where they're going to spend eternity. And no, they will not. It will not be some party down there like people think it will be. No. Yeah, um, I don't have the scripture right offhand, but it's the, the scripture in Matthew when, you know, you you get to that moment and he's and he he looks at you and says, "I never knew you." Yeah. Like they they don't know Christ. No. They they don't know the word. They they don't know God. They they know their version of him. They know their truth, but that that truth that they know is false. Yeah, it's a lie. It's Absolutely. a blasphemous lie. Mm-hmm. You know, from from it's literally coming from the pits of hell. Yeah, like absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, Satan doesn't even have to hide it anymore. Yeah. He 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 parades down the street now, mm-hmm. and people see him. Like, he used to he has to he had to. I think he, he used to have to to you know prowl around like a or at least masquerade mm. like an angel of light but now like he just parades down the street and everybody like satan we love you we love we're your biggest fan we love you satan you know and and that's how um that's that's where we're at in our culture now in america and we think that we're going to last as a country oh come on you know mm-hmm. absolutely uh, absolutely not um we continue down this road um, God, I mean, we're already in judgment. We believe, you know, I believe we're already uh, as a nation under judgment uh, by God. Oh, I said it, judgment. Mm-hmm. Everybody just let me have it. Um, but uh, it's only going to become worse and worse and worse. Um, you know, it's something to, John, if you want to read Romans 1 here in a second, but um, people will argue left and right 
that God did not address these things, that he did not address homosexuality, that he did not address, I mean, he didn't use the word drag queens, Mm -hmm. you know, but that falls under, that falls under the whole thing, you know? And so um, let's just, uh, let's just go ahead and read that, uh, John, if you can, Romans 1, uh, 18 through 32. Yes. And everyone's favorite pastime of John reading scripture. (laughs) 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 All right. Yeah. So uh, Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. In the things that have been made, so they are without excuse for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they become futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to the lust of their hearts to impurity to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creator rather than, or sorry, they worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they knew God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but they give approval to those who practice them. So, uh, yeah, God's word uh, addresses us. Yes, you know? like head on. Yeah. Like doesn't pull any punches. Boom. It's like Grenade. verbatim what it, what is happening Absolutely. right now. Yeah, there, there's no getting around this. And it's amazing the arguments, the, the so-called arguments that they try to bring out against this, they don't even make sense. But they can't just sit there and not say something. They have to go after the word of God and convince themselves to, you know, to as to what they're so invested in is the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, it's like you see, it says they are without excuse. Now, that's Mm -hmm. every man, woman, boy and girl. We're out without excuse. You know, it's like the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. All creation sings to the fact that there's a creator. Right. And it ain't you. It ain't me. It ain't anybody. And to the point that these people, you know, so so many people go and say, I am God. God is within me. And so you have to say things like that in order to believe that these things are okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and so they knew God. They didn't honor him. And so then they're claiming to be wise, which is exactly what's going on. They're claiming to be wise, yet they have become nothing but fools. Mm-hmm. So then. Yep. And I understand why I can get up and read this at a pride parade. Um, and it's not even gonna, it's, it's probably not even, I mean, it'll offend some people, but the, the reality is they don't believe in God and they're, they're pretty openly. Um, what, what makes me so sick is that we in the church, like we talked about are, are, are so blind that, that church, we have to wake up like this, this is the word of God that it's clearly stating what what the word of God is, you mm-hmm. know, and 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 what the, what the truth is, and we bury our heads in the sand yeah. willingly. Yes, like we 
we turn the other way. We like we av mm -hmm. avoid it. We you know we we don't teach it to our kids. Yes, they're coming for our kids. So these are conversations. These are real conversations that we even uncomfortable. Even the I mean I'm not gonna go say like free the nipple, but like have a, a, a conversation with, with my children. Like this is the stuff that is happening. And I understand that you see that coming from, from the white house, from some very prominent places, but this is, this is against what we believe. This is against what the word of God clearly states in his word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no getting around it at least. In the, and I know that the Bible, it is, these things are spiritually discerned as the word tells us, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're spiritually uh, discerned. And so, but, we know that we aren't saved until Christ scrapes the scales from our eyes and draws us to him. And what he's saying here, though, in this passage, along with that, is that when men and women are giving up natural relations for those that are contrary to nature, the men and the women, and even calls them shameless acts, he says, God gave them up then to a debased mind. This is what you want. I will give you up to your ideals. I will give you up then to your desires, your sin. And he lists all these sins, even says in one that all the one, inventors of evil. Man is so bad now that they're trying to one up each other mm -hmm. and inventing more and more evil. And that's what this Sparkle Creed is. The Sparkle Creed is just inventing evil. Yep. And how can we go even further mm -hmm. in our blasphemy uh, of God? Yeah. Um, and, and we it that sparkle like every, almost every word of it like I mean every word of it just the intention behind every word yeah. is just is blasphemous yeah. you know it's I mean you can I mean it just makes you sick I mean mm -hmm. the just the 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 man, try the the manipulation it's not even I don't even it's not even manipulating scripture anymore because it's so it's just I mean I guess you can oh, use but, but yeah it's yeah it's just it's it's beyond manipulating it's yeah. just like yeah yeah it's 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 hey this says it's red but we're just gonna call it orange you know yeah. you know yeah. just because that's what we want to do like <laughs> yeah that's what we it doesn't make sense to us but i'm gonna tell you it makes sense to us mm. and because yeah. the mob says it makes sense yep. then yeah whatever yep. you say the the sky is if you say the sky is you know um pink purple black and blue and green and at the same time uh, then it is it's mm -hmm. such you know if it's pouring down rain outside and you tell me it's a sunny day well then that's your truth living yep. it um doesn't make sense it doesn't work it doesn't work you know so now i will say uh as we start to land the plane here a little bit um before people start commenting and saying i mean you can comment uh, you know, um, you know, let us have it, whatever. Yeah. Um, you can, you, but before you start saying that we need to stay out of, of politics and uh, you need to understand something, people need to understand that, that issues like this, um, and others like this, like abortion, uh, sex trafficking, uh, you know, this whole LGBTQ movement, these things are not political issues. They are biblical issues that have been politicized so to the point, which is another tactic of Satan. And honestly, he's very, very good at his job. Very convincing and persuasive uh, uh, to foolish mankind, right? But these are biblical issues that have been politicized so to the point that we're supposed to not say anything as pastors, especially Christians, but especially as pastors, because if we do, then we're called political pastors. Mm -hmm. And you need to stop fooling yourselves and following that narrative, especially, especially Christians. If you call yourself a Christian, you claim to be a Christian, and a pastor, your pastor or whoever is speaking out against these things, you better study the word before you start going after your pastor and say you're too political and all that kind of garbage, right? We are not political pastors. We are pastors who are simply willing to put ourselves out there and stand up for the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is should not be surprising to the world that that is our job. It really, all the more, should not be surprising to people in the church that that is our job, not just as pastors, but as Christians. So contrary to popular belief, we are doing this 
for everyone in hopes that someone will see the absolute insanity of it all, realize that we are speaking with biblical reason, and hopefully you will be moved by God to see the truth because his truth is the only truth. The, his truth is the gospel. Mm-hmm. And, and, and his love is the gospel. And it, mm-hmm. his, his, his truth is love. Um, but it's, it's biblical love. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what, that's what we, we, we want people to see here is true biblical love, yep. not the love, love, love in the sparkle creed. That's, mm-hmm. that's not, that's not true love. No. Um, I, I don't even know what that is, but it's not love. Mm-hmm. Um, but true biblical love, um, that's the truth. That is the gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, but truth goes hand in hand with love. It does. Right? It does. Truth and love. I mean, they're the same. You know, mm-hmm. they're 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 the same. In, in in effect, like oh, which one do we err on? Err with truth. Truth is grace. Truth is love. To, you know, and, yep. and so. But people need to understand. And this is something that. When I'm in arguments or I don't even like the debates, I'll say sometimes they're arguing on debating. Um, <laughs> we'll use those semantics, right? I'll split those hairs there, you know, and I always try to give people the gospel um, when uh, some of the homosexual, lesbian and gay community here come after me, whether it's on Facebook or wherever, um, I always try to give them the gospel. And then, and then it's usually just like, well, that's nonsense, you know, and, and, and stuff. But, but here is what the gospel is that you need to hear. Here's what the gospel is, honestly, that even Christians in the church don't understand. People, you know, if you're just a name tag Christian, you need to go further than that and understand that it is the fact that Jesus came to this world in complete and utter humility. He stepped down from his throne in heaven to come here, born as a baby from the womb of a young virgin. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit into this young girl named Mary. He lived an absolute perfect life. Yes, perfect life. He never committed a single sin, not so much as a lustful or evil thought. Jesus Christ was perfect personified perfection because of he of who he is he was able to do this to live this perfect life and then offer himself as the only and perfect sacrifice for mankind who was wallowing in filth and sin and we all are before we come to Christ so Christ died so that everyone who calls upon his name repents and believes in him that he is the son of God and the savior of the world would be saved. So he died, right? He died and it was fully, he was dead, but that's not the end of the story. If it was the end of the story, then everything that everybody else says, that's fine. Doesn't matter. We are, as Paul said, of all the people to be pitied the most because we're basically uh, worshiping a dead man. But that's not the end of the story because by his very own power, he rose from the grave three days later just as he said that he would. And after rising from the dead, he would walk the earth for 40 days, teaching his disciples and showing himself to many others. And then he ascended to heaven where he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Why? Because his work was done. His mission was completed. So Jesus, Yahweh, God, he is the only God. So before you go saying God in just any certain uncertain terms or whatever, God, the God of the Bible is the only living God and all others, they are simply man-made fairy tales. And you need to know this and you need to remember this. And you also need to remember that, that any fool, go ahead, any can be a fool, worldly baller. <laughs> But it takes a wise man to be a biblical brawler. That's absolutely right. We love you guys. God bless you. See you later.